Okay, I consider this a difficult problem, but they are saying use integration by parts, so I'll take their hint. And this is a definite integral, and it's going off to infinity, so it's improper. So the first thing I do is just write it with, with the limit, and it's r going to infinity. The next thing I got to figure out, if they want parts, I got to figure out what the parts are. And before I do that, I got to remind myself what the derivative of arc sine is. Let me write this over here. So y equals, sorry about that, y equals the arc sine. And I want to reminisce what you did in Calc uh, 1. You wrote this as sine of y equals x, and then you differentiate it. You get cosine of y dy dx equals 1. So dy dx would equal 1 over the cosine of y. And let me remind you, you did in, in the um, earlier courses, you did a right triangle. You certainly did demand and range, things like that, but let, let's, let's not, worry, not worry about that too much. And let's see, the, um, the sine of y, so that's the angle y, right, would be x over 1. And that means that this over here would be 1 minus x squared. All right? So what do you get over here? dy dx would equal 1 over the cosine of y. Well, the cosine of y is pretty simple. It's just this over here. All right? So let me put this down for you. And I'm going to do this integral over here. I'm not going to do the limit yet. And I want to do the arc sine. 1 over x squared minus 1 dx. So looking at it, I probably would say, you know, just from the get-go, that um, let's see, u would be equal to arc sine of 1 over x squared minus 1. And du, well, this can be a tough one, isn't it? It's going to be, let's take a look. It's going to be, uh, let's see, the drift of arc sine, right? That's 1 over. Let's take a look at that. And what do you get there? The root of 1 minus the argument. And the argument is this thing over here. Squared times of the inside. Well, the inside, let, let's write that it's x squared minus 1 to the minus 1. And we're going to do the derivative of that now. What does that give you? Minus, let's see, that would be minus 2 then, right? So it would be x squared minus 1 squared. And then you get 2x there. Let's write that down. So you get minus, let's put the minus on the outside, uh, 2x. And then you're going to get Let's see, x squared minus 1 squared. That looks kind of nightmarish to me. So I'm going to simplify a little bit and see if things get better. But it doesn't look like it's going to be too good. It is, so du, whoops, let's put the dx over here. So I get, uh, let's see, I would get minus 2x. And let me see if I can do the bottom. And I get this over here. So I get x squared minus 1 squared. I get this nasty looking root which I'm going to put down as x squared minus 1 squared. Then you get x squared minus 1 squared. Wow, that's crazy looking, isn't it? Minus 1. Well, i got to keep doing, going on, don't I? So du minus 2x dx. I'm starting to see that I could do a simplification here. And let me point out what I mean by that. That this and this, at least for the limits, yep, yeah, for the limits, it's going to be an easy route to take. And you're going to get, let's see what you're going to get. You're going to get x squared minus 1. Then you get this nasty looking root here. And let's take a look at that. What does that give you? x squared uh, minus 1 squared. That's x4. Uh, let's see, minus 2x squared plus 1. But I'll be uh, what would you, I'll be taking 1 from that. So we would get x4 minus 2x squared. And that simplifies too. So du, I'm going write this down, minus 2x. That's x squared minus 1. And again, for limits integration, that's a pretty easy root to do. You're going to get x root of. I factored out the, uh, the x squared there. So you're going to get x squared minus 2. Oops. Dx. Let me show you where this is, and this is right over here. All right, so we did the du. The x is canceled and left off at minus 2 dx. Yeah, we got it. All right, we did good. Let me get my eraser out, and I'm pretty comfortable I got to that level. All right, it took me time, took me effort, but I got there. 
All right, so someone said, what'd you do that for? We're using integration by parts, right? So remember, you know, I, I said this was the U, and this would be the DV then. All right, let's put that down. And I got that written down, so I got the U, and I got this. And what we're going to do, we're going to just take this now and break it up. We're going to need integration by parts. So it's going to be X times this uh, plus... Let's see what we got there. And it's going to be, let me get green out. It's going to be this times this. Well, minus a minus is a plus. I'm seeing the 2x, and I'm seeing this business over here. Boy, that looks really tough, doesn't it? I got my racer out. I'm pretty comfortable in getting there using integration by parts, but that, that actually looks worse. All right, let me repeat this. We're here now. And what I have to do, I have to work on that second integral. All right, so I'm working on an integral over there. I'm looking at that, and I'm wondering how I do that. And I'd, I'd probably use a substitution. So I'm going to say u equals this over here. I'm going to square both sides, and you get u squared equals x squared minus 2 u squared, well, you know what, I, I need that x squared minus 1, right? So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I think I got almost everything I need, and I don't have the derivative yet, or the differential, so let's put this down, du. That's always tough for me, isn't it? So it's going to be, let's see, uh, i got to be careful here, right? So 2, the root of x squared minus, whoops, I don't know why I did that. I had twos in my mind, right? I'll do it again. Two root of, I'm differentiating this over here, x squared minus two. And then there's going to be two x on top and a dx. And the twos cancel off. So I'm seeing their du now. It's right over here. All right, let's make our substitutions. Looks tough, but we can do it. All right? So, let's write it down. And what are we going to do? We just kind of plug things in, right? So, I'm going to go over here and just write it down for you, make sure things are working out as expected. So, we have 2x. We have x squared minus 1. We have this over here. And I'm going to start to circle things. And I'm seeing this. You know what? I, I, maybe I'm not seeing that completely. Let me get rid of the two here. So I'm seeing this. And that's equal to du, right? That's not so bad. And then what do I see? I see the x squared minus 1, right? And what's that going to be? u squared plus 1. Well, isn't that convenient? That worked out pretty nice. All right, I'm seeing that now. I'm seeing that right over here. And what I'm going to do, I know that guy's antiderivative. It's arctangent. So I get 2 arctangent u plus c, and I get this over here. So I get the thing completely integrated now, completely. So what I get, the integration of this... Well, we've already figured this part out, and now we just figured this part out over here. Here comes the tough part, though. Now the limit. All right, the limit. This guy. It's this. We get the limit r goes to infinity of this nightmare. All right, the C's are going to disappear, so don't put that down. Let's do one thing at a time. And I'm actually going to do the lower limit first, because I think it's easier to deal with. All right, so I'm going to do the lower limit. So the lower limit lower limit. All right, let's do that. And that's the lower limit over here. And let's just plug it in. So what do you get? You would get, it's going to be minus that, by the way, but I just want to do the lower limit. So lower limit is going to be over here. And it's going to be, uh, let's see, root 2 times the arc sine. And root 2 there would give you what? It would give you 1 over 1, which is 1, and then uh, plus twice the arctangent, 
And if I put a root two there, I'd get zero, right? That's convenient. So this one goes to zero, and this one goes to um, pi over two. So it's going to be root two times pi over two. I got that. I can see that. That's the lower limit. Got to do that upper limit, though, right? The upper limit. That, that's more challenging for me. All right? Let's go through it. And to do that, I'm kind of looking at this over here. It's a limit problem, right? It's where r is going to infinity. And I, I think I can do part of it. And the part I can do is probably, um, probably this part. So as r goes to infinity, this goes towards infinity, this goes towards infinity, and the arctangent, as you go towards infinity, is pi over 2. So it's going to be 2 times pi over 2, which is pi. I'm seeing that. But then I got this business over here. I'm going to write that down over here. I'm going to say it's a bit more of a challenge. And the reason for that is r is going to infinity, and this guy over here is going towards, let's see, oh, 0. So I got that indeterminate form, and I'm going to be using L'Hopital's rule now. Let's go through that. And that one last limit I got to do, right? So let's see what we got so far. So what do we have so far? We have my, my, my results are pi minus root 2 pi over 2. I got that so far, but I still need to do this last guy. I wonder what this is. All right. Now, I might have suspicions about it, but right now I'm not going to use my suspicion to say the answer. So I write it down, and that's written right over here. And I want to get it in L'Hopital's form. So I do this, and instead of doing r times that, I divide by 1 over r. And what would you get over there? Let's see if it's L'Hopital. So the top would be going towards, let's see, that would go towards 0, right? Because the inside is 0, and the arc sine of that would be 0. And this over here is also zero, so L'Hopital. That's why I put the H over here. And how do I do that? I take the derivative of top and bottom. Well, the derivative of bottom is simple. You know what? I did the derivative of the top already, didn't I? I don't want to do it again. Did we do that? Yeah, way back up here. Do you remember that? We did that. i do it again. So what do you get over here? You get this. Boy, that looks nasty. So let's rewrite it. Limit as r goes to infinity. Certainly going to be minus. Oh, no, it's positive. Negative over negative is positive, right? And what do you get there? I guess you get 2r squared. Thanks for the error of my key, by the way. And then you get r squared minus 1. And then you get the square root of r squared minus 2. I think I'm missing a 2 over there. Let me make sure that's the case. I wrote the right derivative down. Yeah, I wrote the wrong thing down. All right, there's a 2 there. Can I do that limit? Yeah, I can do it. How do you do that? Divide through by r squared. You get 2. 1 minus 1 over r squared. I'm associating the factor r squared with just this first factor here. And you left off with this. And lo and behold, this becomes 2 divided by infinity, which is 0. This is good. So we're ready. We got our answer now. What's our answer going to be? This is going to be our answer. Let's see if we have the written down. We have that written right over here. Again, pi minus a root 2 pi over 2. I simplified it. Let me just go through that briefly with you. I factored a pi out, and I got 1 minus root 2 over 2, common denominator. No, you don't have to do that. That's 2, 2 minus root 2. And if I get that, yeah, it's right over here. I also approximated it. All right, and that's the end. Thank you so much for paying attention.